Uh, good morning, student friends. Today, I am going to take this class for the IGNO students, especially related to their course program MPSC 7 Unit 2, related to the theories of the theories or approaches to the study of social movement. Till today, we have discussed about the nature of the social movement and the approach, basically the Marxist approach to the study of social movement. Today, I am going to discuss about the liberal approaches to the study of social movement. When we try to understand the liberal approach, we should know the basic concept or core issue of the liberal ideology. When we say about the liberal ideology, then we should know that this is the evolution of the society where people demanded their rights and justice. Inside the rights and justice, there are many concepts like equality and liberty play a very important role in this regard. So liberal approaches basically deals with the concept of liberty as demanded by the peoples throughout the history. Peoples demand liberty to attain, to avail, to achieve many needs or to fulfill their various expectations. Social movement is a result of expectations. To fulfill the expectations, to fulfill the needs, to fill up the aspirations, the peoples involved in mass mobilization or we can say they start the social movement. When we talk about the liberal approach to the study of social movement, in this field, we should know three basic theories. Number one, structural functional approach or structural function approach. Number two, resource mobilization theory. And number three, relative deprivation theory. Let us discuss one by one structure function approach. To keep in mind very easily about this approach, we should pay importance on the structure system of the government. We expect many things from the state, from the political system, from the structure, which help us to fulfill our aspirations. Any issue related to the system, any issue related to the structure, for its change, for its modification, for its reform, or to, uh, to fill up the expectations of people by changing the political systems, maybe we can categorize under the structure function approach. Let us discuss this approach according to your book, according to your study materials. There is a great deal of variations among the non Marxist scholars in their approach to analyze the social movement. The ideological positions regarding a need for social and or political change and the rule of movement they are in defy. It is argued by several liberal scholars such as William Kornhauser, Robert Nisbet, Edward Shields and others that Mass movements are the product of mass societies, which are extremist and anti-democratic, which are extremist and anti-democratic. These scholars are in favor of excluding the masses from day-to-day -day participation in politics, which hampers the efficient functioning of the government. So what the structure functions approach scholars? They advocate, they advocate that masses should be excluded, 
masses should be excluded from the day-to-day -day participation in politics. It means in the law-making procedure, law implementation procedure, and law adjudication procedures, we should exclude the masses. Because if masses will give him such type of rights, then it will hamper, it will hamper the efficient, efficient functioning of the government. Some Indian scholars who have approved of the hesitations for independence from the foreign rule did not favor hesitations by people in the post-independence period. If we take the example of India, then we will able to see that a group of the people they involved in the hesitations to get freedom from the British government, from the British rule. And that group of the people, when we got the independence, they refused. They were not in favor of hesitations of the peoples after the independence period for their fulfillment of the needs or expectations. They condemned them outright as dangerous. When we got independence, after that the political authority, political uh, powerful group or the decision making group, they regard, they regarded that outright or moment, moments are dangerous and dysfunctional for civilized society. It is not good for the civilized society. Though some other liberals do not favor revolutionary change in political and economic structure, they advocate political change which is confined to change in government and political institutions. A few are revolutionary saints, but they differ from Marxist scholars in class analysis. They lay emphasis on political institutions and culture. They lay emphasis on political institutions and culture. So, we should keep in mind that the structure function approach basically related to the political institutions and its activities or and its process or, and its activities or and its uh, process and also the people's reactions towards it. In their analysis of moments, some do not inquire into social and economic cause of conflict and collective struggles. Others differ in their emphasis, emphasis on the causes responsible for the moment. Some different causes they, they identify as responsible for the social moment. Some emphasize what are those factors which pressurize, which are responsible for the starting of moments. It is advocated by them as like below on number one. Some emphasize individual psychology treats. Individual psychology forces the people to involve in social movement. Some focus on elite power struggles. It is the intellectual group. It is the aristocrat group. It is the well-known group. It is the educated group. They, they, play import, they play important role in the starting of the social movement. And they also manipulate it. Some others emphasize the importance of cultural rather than the economic factor. A group of liberal political thinkers, they believe that, that the social moment is not a result of the economic factor, it is because of the cultural factor. It is related to the value, faith, attitude, norms, orientations, custom, convention, and traditions. The scholars who adhere to the theory of political development consider that the rising aspiration of the people are not adequately met by existing political institutions which are rigid or incompetent. So what they have said that the state or the political system it is incapable, it is incompetent to fulfill the demand to fulfill the aspirations of the peoples as a result the social movement come into existence. As the gap between the expectations of the peoples and the performance of the system widens, political instability and disorder leading to the mass upstart increase Huntington in 1968. P. Huntington in 1968 he stated that as a gap between the expectations of the peoples and performance of the system widens, political instability and disorder leading to mass abstract increases. 
Indian scholars Rajani Kuthari argued that direct action is inevitable in the context of India present day parliamentary democracy. So, to fulfill the aspirations of the peoples, to change the political system, the drawbacks of the political to overthrow the drawbacks of the political system, Rajani Kuthari argued that direct action is inevitable. Following all this, make the ideal self-government more and more remote and render parliamentary government unstable from a political organization. The general climate of frustration, the ineffective of known channel of communication, the alienation and automation of the individual, the tendency towards resignation and continuous state of conflict which may remain latent and suppressed for a time between the rulers and rule may lead to the social movement. It is also argued by some of the political scientists, social scientists that public protests have a certain function and utility even in a parliamentary form of government. David Bailey, B A Y L E Y, David Bailey in 1962 observes that before and after independence, a large number of people held that the institutional means of redress of grievances, frustrations, are and wrongs actually are actual or fancized were inadequate. What he stated, he stated that. Before and after independence, a large number of people felt that the institutional means of redress of grievance, functions and wrongs, actual or fancied, were inadequate. When we are in an independent, independent country, we must have the right to raise our grievance. We must have the right to indicate the wrongs. We must have the right to show our so, so our dissatisfactions to the government, but this is not actually seen in an adequate way. So, another theory, this is the structure functions theory we have discussed. Then another liberal theory, another liberal theory is known as the resource mobilization theory. Resource mobilization theory is an outcome of rational choice theory. It is based on the assumption that individual actions are motivated by the goals and express their preferences. They act within the given constraints and available choices. It is not possible for all individuals to get all that they want. They must make choices within the available possibilities at the given point of time. So, the so resource mobilization theory is an outcome of rational choice theory. It is the rationality of the human being. It forced the peoples to start the social movement. 